Inside of Bitwig Studio, we already have two pad-based devices, the XY instrument and the XY effect. And these are going to look relatively similar to the uh, different pad-based modulators that we have. We have the XY, the Vector 4, and the Vector 8. And these three do, in my opinion, fall into the macro type category of modulator. They work pretty much the same way, but like with the mix and the select four, they're souped up and they have some slightly different functionality and can probably take you further um, depending on the setup that you have and what it is you're trying to accomplish. But let's just start by bringing in the XY here. And then what I'll do with this XY instrument is inside of A, I'll bring in like an instance of the polysynth. And over in B, we'll bring in an instance of the FM4. And then in each of these, we'll bring in some kind of a preset. Let's use like a pad because those are usually pretty useful for uh, going in between. And I really just want to show you the uh, difference here between the XY instrument and then the XY modulator because they are very different. All right, so now when I'm in here and I'm in the XY instrument, when I'm all the way here to the left on A, I'm hearing the polysynth. We can see there's some modulation, but that's just built into the instrument. And it's not going to change as I transition and move this over to B, where we are now hearing the sound coming out of the FM4. And if I'm in the middle, we get kind of like 50% of both. But notice that there's no way for me to go in here and say have this high pass from the FM4 um, opening up as I'm transitioning across. That's just not something I can do with this. This is really just like an audio crossfade. It's a mix. If we go in the middle, we'd be getting 25% from all of these different slots. Or in the case here on the x-axis, when I'm in the middle, we're getting 50% of A, 50% of B. The whole point of these modulators is to expand the functionality so that not only could you, for example, move this in real time, but you could also then move parameters. And so if I go into the X, Y, you could see that I could take this and I could map it to the X, and I could take the Y and map it to the Y, obviously. And in this case, I'm just not going to do that for the sake of example. But inside of A now, I could take something like frequency, resonance, increase the space, increase the stereo, bring this up a little bit, so that as I'm going across, not only are we crossfading, but we're also then able to adjust other parameters. And we could go in and we could do the same sort of thing with uh, B as well if we wanted to. Like increase the release, bring up the effects mix, noise frequency. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think. Let's try this. And the same thing is going to be true if we were going up on the Y side as well. If you have a pad controller, really great because you can map this to a controller or a key. Or if you're working with a touch interface, you may prefer this to working with a macro. Obviously, if we had a couple of macros in here and then we had knobs on our MIDI controller, we could get the same kind of control here by just bringing this on here and bringing this on here. And then if I had two knobs to work with, I could swing around or I could, you know, bring on a different modulators to jump this to different points. And if that was the case, I wouldn't even necessarily need these knobs here. But just for the sake of example, I thought I would show you that. So we're going to end um, the XY pad here. And then we're going to go in with just a blank instance of the polysynth and set something up with maybe the vector eight so you can see uh, the range of the different modulators that you have. But for the most part, the XY is going to get the job done for you. If you want even more variation, that's when you go to the Vector 4 or the Vector 8. The XY is definitely the most traditional and it's the most intuitive. Within the XY, we only have one grid that we're working with. And so if I was to take something like, let's say, reverb time, and I was to increase that and maybe also like increase the release on both of these, 
we know that as I'm going across the x-axis, by the time I get to the other side, we reach the top, and as I come back down, right, we remove it. As I go up the y-axis, nothing is going to change, okay? But that's not true with the um, vector 4 and the vector 8, and that's why those require um, a little bit more time and a little bit more thought on your part as the user if you want to go and use them. Uh, to be honest so far, I have not used the vector 4 or the vector 8 because I can accomplish everything I'd want to accomplish with the XY, and it just makes more sense to me having worked with XY pads in the past. Uh, but for those of you who are maybe a little more adventurous, definitely go in there and mess with the vector 4 and the vector 8. So with the vector 4 now, when I go to a point here, and if I'm over in the bottom left and I'm on this particular uh, vector, vector 1 of 4, this is actually going to then indicate my high point. So if I go in and I increase the sync, I increase the sub, I increase the reverb time, and again, we'll maybe increase the release a little bit. That's where we're at now, when I'm down here. And as I go up, at the top, it goes away. And as I go over to the other side, it then fades out. But what's interesting is if I reach this pad area up here, this quadrant, we really shouldn't expect anything. It should actually all be back down in a way. So we can watch and see that when I get into that quadrant here, until I start coming across in, in this region, there is no range set. And so what I'd probably do is I'd go up to this side and then also set a bunch of things to be kind of extreme, maybe extreme on a different way. Like, let's bring the delay on and uh, we'll have this modulate like the mix. That's what I wanted. Cool, but when I go down into this quadrant here, the delay is going to be completely turned off. So you can kind of hear the variation that you're able to get out of this. When you go and you step it up to the vector 8, it gets even more crazy and a little bit more complex because now you suddenly have, again, these four different quadrants, but they're all giving you like more values to kind of go between. Uh, so you can really kind of focus in if you were to use these three on this first quadrant. If you were to use these three, you'd be focusing in on this quadrant, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not even going to show you the Vector 8 because I have a tough time really getting usable results out of it, but definitely something to experiment with. And if you're willing to sit there and take the time and map out a lot of things, it can be useful and it can get you some really interesting results. But I'm just very happy that there's even an XY pad um, for somebody who's maybe less adventurous like my myself, that's where I'm going to be sticking to. And I know it can get me some really awesome results. And we saw before how you could then take another modulator and have it maybe like randomize the points it's going to, or you could even use like an LFO to have it like be scanning through um, and repeating over and over again. So there's a lot you can do with this and really the sky's the limit. So uh, use your imagination and go farther than I am.